This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for the end of life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we t shift from not talking about dying to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live at the end of our lives. And it's time to communicate about the kind of care we want and don't want for ourselves. We believe that the place for this to begin is not in the intensive care unit, but together we explore the various paths to life's ending. Together we can make these difficult conversations easier and together we can make sure that our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. So if you're ready, we ask you, navigate the journey. And today, we have a very special guest with us on the phone is John Radcliffe, who has become the face of medical aid in dying. And our co-host today is Scott Foster, who has been with this issue for 20 years now. And so, John is on the phone. John just completed, what, your 59th chemo session? Yes. Yes. Yes, my 59th. Good morning, Marsha and Good. Scott, both of you. Good morning, and thank you for all the hard work that you've done for decades now on, on this legislation and lots of other very good social legislation as well. Uh, yeah, I've had, I've had 59 um, three-day sessions of chemo so far. Um, I go in for my 60th in another two weeks. Oh. And um, we'll see what happens. We're just con we're just going to have to continue this. What exactly? What is it that? Uh, what kind of cancer do you have? And what is it that the chemo is doing? Okay, um, I was diagnosed in June of 2014 uh, with. Um, terminal uh, colon cancer, which had spread to my liver. Oh, my. Which had metastas metastasized into the liver and the colon. Uh, inoperable because of where it was, and it had already spread, despite the fact, by the way, that I get uh, colonoscopies pretty regularly. I mean, I had, all, I had done that. This thing came on really fast. Um, and, um, and, and got terminal just like that. Um, and they gave me six months to 24 months to live if I would, I mean, this is, these are just, you know, they, they give me six months if I didn't do anything and I would die within that period of time, uh, or roughly. Um, and, uh, and, and if, you know, so, so I'm, I'm stuck with, uh, with taking chemo until, um, it doesn't work anymore. And when it doesn't work anymore, we'll take different chemo until that doesn't work anymore. And, um, and then we'll try something else until that doesn't work anymore. But, uh, you know, we will try to stay alive as long as we have a quality of life to live. And, and although I've slowed down a lot, I can't obviously be there today with you like I'd like to be or any place else. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's going to get me eventually. It's not going to get me today. So we're doing we're doing good. Oh, I don't know where I went with that, but <laughs> well, <laughs> but there you go. When now, um, because you can't see us, we have a yellow lay for you because that oh, oh, nice. oh yes, that has become our signature piece, as you know, and we have. Yeah. A hearing on Friday with the Senate. Is that the full Senate? No, it's the Senate no. Judiciary. Judiciary. Senate Judiciary. Yeah, just Judiciary Committee. And so what do you think is going to happen? Well, uh, 
I can tell you what's going to happen, I think, because of your hard work and the hard work of, of others uh, over a long period of time, uh, public opinion um, first shifted and then went into overdrive with intensity uh, as people began to age and more and more people began to be, you know, in favor of this. Um, they began to go along and it's just been a rough go, but this year, it did pass, a bill did pass uh, the House. It's different than the bill which passed the Senate last year uh, in some particulars. And um, and when it went over to the Senate uh, Consumer Protection and Health Committee, uh, there was some question about whether or not it was going to be amended. And if it would have been amended, then of course it would have had to go to conference but Chair Baker, in her wisdom, decided that uh, this bill ought to have the ability to go before the entire Senate uh, and be heard uh, and, and be voted upon. So she, she voted out of her committee. Uh, I think the vote was unanimous, six to zero. Uh, there, will be, there will be a hearing on Friday, but no testimony will be heard. They'll take your written testimony but they've received so much testimony on this over such a long period of time. They know what everybody thinks pretty much. So they're just going to do decision making. And I, there are five people on that committee. And I expect the vote to be four to one. Uh, uh, and one? It'll, go then, it'll then go to the um, Senate floor later this session. Uh, for one final vote, and the vote last time uh, they did this was 22 to 3. I see the same people voting the same way, 22 to 3, except I doubt there will be any, at this point, I don't think that there will be any voters who will vote with reservation. Well, um, now, let's go back to the beginning here. You are the current face of this issue. You're the face that everybody <laughs> sees. You're the one that's been interviewed in the newspaper and magazines and everywhere. Uh, now, just for our audience, John and I go back way, way back. John was <laughs> with us when we fought for the Martin Luther King holiday. And we have been on right. opposite sides on issues mainly gambling and we have you know well, but you we somehow about everything, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> somehow yeah. we've managed to come together <laughs> when it counts and uh so tell us a little bit about you uh what what did john who is john why does the community know so much about you so that when we say john Radcliffe, people say oh i remember him i know him oh yeah, I've been around a long time. I've been I've been active in the community uh, for over 40 years. Uh, that's not as long as some. Uh, I think I don't know, Scott. Maybe you do more than. Maybe you're older than me. I don't know. But <laughs> anyway, I came here in I came here in 75, 1975, to uh, become the executive director of the State Teachers Union (HSTA) which I did for 13 years. I'm mostly known for that. People know me as a former head of the HSTA. Somehow that stuck with people. I was there for 13 years, but yeah, they still see me today and they go, oh yeah, my mother knows you. <laughs> uh, and that, that sort of thing. Uh, and then I was, uh, I was uh, uh, associate director of the professor's union for another 17 years. That's uh, at, the, at the university. All, at the at UHPA, University yeah. of Hawaii, the entire yeah state, all the state professors, and yeah, I had quite a career there for 17 years. It was really wonderful, uh, but also uh, after I ran for Congress in 1988, um, uh, for one whatever reason, uh, there were a lot of people who thought that I'd make a good advocate for them. So. Uh, people began to call me up and ask me to lobby for them on certain issues. And, you know, because I had the kind of job that allowed it, uh, and it didn't take a lot of time, um, I did that. So uh, I did two things. I was working for the professors, and I was also doing 
uh, lobbying on some issues. Um, and and then I went out on my own and just and after, of course, after I after I had the terminal illness thing, I pretty much had to cut back, cut off, cut out everything. Now I'm retired. Now you're retired. So uh, I am. Yep. So you retired or the cancer retired? Which is it? <laughs> cancer's not going to retire. Okay, cancer, good. They All right. All right. The em they don't. They don't call it the emperor of diseases for nothing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a sneaky, ruthless, ever persistent disease that is ultimately going to kill me. But it's not going to kill me now. Yeah, uh, that's and, an interesting. Every, every, every day is good now. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. So many people, when they talk about this bill, the other side, that is, and they don't seem to understand the difference in when you ask for medical aid in dying, that the cancer has already, like you said, the emperor, has already claimed your body. So can you explain so ordinary people understand the difference in medical aid in dying and the emperor of diseases? Yeah, and what it yeah, does right, and what, what right. the difference it's, it's is. All a question of, it, it's a question of who's in control. And at the end of the day, I want to be in control of my life as long as I can be. Uh, and I mean, I've been through an awful lot of disease over my lifetime. You know, I've had lots of things, polio, tuberculosis, uh, you know, all kinds of bad, bad things happen to me. I know all about hospitals and disease and all that sort of stuff. And I know about me too. Uh, so I know that uh, I'm strong enough uh, mentally capable enough to know what to do and when to do it. Uh, and when the pain gets so bad and, uh, and life gets so bad uh, that I, I need to, to end it, I will be able to end it, and I won't be at the mercy of some other person who is going to say, there, there, you know, let me help you with this morphine. Um, and I don't like morphine. Um, and... and you know, it's just a, you're not in control when uh, when when you're simply don't have this kind of legislation. So it is for peace of mind more than it is anything else, uh, Marcia and Scott and people. Uh, it's for it's for uh, the ability to know that you're taken care of and you're you know you can you can end your life. Well, we need to take a, we need to take a break. Yeah, we need to take a break, and we will be right back. Don't go away. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by, and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investings, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you. It's going to talk to you. Oh, here we are. We're back. And Scott has been with this issue for, what, 20 years or about almost 20 years? and uh, trying to get it over the hump, okay, to get away from the naysayers and the people that say, oh, we can't do that, and you can't kill people, and blah, blah, blah. But in that time, uh, lots and lots of people call Scott and talk to him, people that are at the end and have no, have no idea what to do next. And so Scott, you want to tell us exactly what it is that these people are talking about? Is it the same thing that John is talking about, that, that I think, issue? I think that John can certainly associate and, and maybe add some, some of his wisdom and experience to uh, 
uh, what our organization, the Hawaii Death with Dignity Society, does. Uh, we're best known for advocating for the bill, and uh, uh, we, uh, I first created the organization in 2002, right after we lost by three votes in the Senate, uh, sensing that uh, we had just had to be better organized. And uh, uh, we really had quite a group then. Uh, most of them have passed on themselves now. But uh, what's taken place since and for the past 20 years uh, is that because of my visibility and my name is on our website, Hawaii Death with Dignity Society uh, org. My phone number is there. Uh, I didn't set out to be uh, uh, the community li liaison for this, but it's just turned out that way. And what what happens frequently and several times a month is I will receive a phone call uh, from someone. Uh, uh, either who personally or a member of their family has just received a terminal diagnosis. And of course, as, as John knows, that, that diagnosis changes everything. Perspective, what am I going to do today, tomorrow, the day after? Uh, and then the journey begins uh, uh, to uh, try to establish uh, one's end of life choices. Uh, I do usually explain I, I'm not a doctor, so I can't uh, get into diagnoses and recommending for treatment or, or all of those very important things. But I, I do, of course, refer people to their doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, a lot of people do not have a personal physician. Uh, uh, people, people with lesser incomes and, and in, in uh, 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 financial circumstances that just they, they don't have those things that many of us take for granted. Uh, I of course right. exp I explain of course uh, 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 hospice, what hospice is, the fact that hospice exists uh, and the benefits of, of, of being involved early on in hospice, mm -hmm. investigating hospice and uh, uh, I also uh, uh, try to encourage people to fill out their uh, 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 end of life uh, directives, advanced, the advanced, directives. advanced directives. So, uh, John, I don't know how if you knew that about our organization because when the legislature's not in session, that that's what we're doing. And yeah, uh, I I do know that I do know that Scott, and I really I'm glad you brought it up because uh, I think. You know, you've been you've been bearing a lot of the brunt of of uh, pressure on this for a very long period of time. You've been in a lot longer than I have. When I first got into it, I began to get those kind of calls too, because when people like you or I, you know, we show up, all of a sudden people think we know something, and that we could probably help them. <laughs> So they call us, right? Right. I mean, I've had a number of I've had a number of calls from people that have just been so heartrending and devastating that I I can't even get over it, and uh, um, and and I'm certainly not the people who are in pain and in trouble. But I mean, I've had those kind of cases uh, uh, several times as recently as this week. I had a guy call me up this week, and it was it was just heartrending. Well, uh, I, I I can't do anything to help people in these situations where they're, you know, they're, they're, they've made other choices right? and and they're they're now they're alone. It's and, it. uh, what do you do? Huh? And well, you know, that was the reason we started this program, navigating the journey, to talk about yeah. exactly that. That over the years, like Scott says, he's come to know that these are the conversations that people want to have, but who do they talk to? Yeah. So, you know, this guy, for example, this guy that, that I was just talking about right now, I don't want to go on and on about this for very much longer, but I believe that because of the anxiety he's had to face over the last couple of years, it's kind of driving him crazy. Um, and then you got that problem to deal with, 
and, and if, if you lose your, you know, you lose your mental stability over this stuff, uh, that's another problem. <laughs> now you so, have stayed you know, strong. The, the kind of stuff that we've been doing of just you and I, uh, Marsha and, and Scott, and others have been doing is just telling people it's okay. You know, and you're good. Sure, you're going to die. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get through this, you know? <laughs> it, it seems to me, John, that... Death is, death is, death is very temporary. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and we all have an end date, yeah. And an expiration date, we all have. <laughs> it seems to me, John, that, that many of the... Most of, if not all of these people, are just looking for someone to listen and uh, yeah. to talk with. I guess so. and, and what little bit of, of uh, wisdom, of knowledge we can pass on to them, uh, uh, that's the way I sort of see my role. I, I, I tell them what yeah. I can, and then I just hear them out. And uh, uh, it seems... It's, well, that's very, that's very wise. It's very wise, because uh, it's, it's hard to hear. It is. It, it w does wear on one. You know, uh, uh, John, tell us, uh, uh, let's go back to the, the, the bill, uh, what, it, what it is and what it is not. Oh, well, it's, it, what it is not is, uh, let me go the other way first. What it is, is it the legislation which would allow a mentally competent adult over the age of 21 uh, with a terminal disease, meaning will die within six months or less, according to the doctors and physicians who are in charge of the individual's case, whatever. Um, uh, and uh, what it really is, is it allows a doctor to prescribe end-of-life medication uh, and not be put in prison for it. That's what it does. It allows choice. So, uh, you said not it put well, in it prison. Doesn't do it. Let's, it certainly let's... doesn't allow teenagers to get a hold of it. Right. It doesn't allow uh, uh, people who have Alzheimer's to get a hold of it, uh, which is probably too bad. Uh, it, 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 uh, it, there's a number of things that it uh, you know, this bill is very, very, very restrictive. This is easily the most going to be the most restrictive. Uh, death with dignity, medical aid, and dying bill in the country. Is that going to be a handicap, all these restrictions? Sure. Oh, okay. Would it, would it tend <laughs> yes. to slow you yes. down when you look at all the restrictions and say, I can't do that, you know? I, I don't know. But, uh, now, let's, you said about putting in jail. For our audience, uh, Hawaii has an arcane law that says anyone that assists someone else to die, to take their own life, whatever the, no matter how noble it is, they can be charged with manslaughter. So if the doctor assists you with taking the medication, they can be charged with manslaughter. If your mother assists you with taking the medication, she can be charged with manslaughter. So. Uh, I, I think that maybe the next time what we need to do is get rid of that bill, that law, because it's been on the books forever, according to our former well, attorney general. He said, yeah, it, this legislation doesn't let anybody off the hook, uh, maybe except me. I mean, it, this, this legislation is still work for you. Uh, I mean, if, you're, if neither of you are terminal, uh, then I would guess that, that as the years go by, thank goodness now in the future you'll have some data, uh, uh, as the years go by, people are going to want to amend this legislation, I believe, but not at the not moment. Not now, yeah. And, then, and a bill like that, and legislation like we have on the other, the other one about the manslaughter thing, um, yeah, this will, this will take, this carves out an exception. And it does carve out an exception, or it does not. I'm sorry. It does. It, carves it does. Out an exception to the manslaughter rule. Oh, yeah, good. Because it does. It's, you know, not doctors. Not not. You know, you're you're okay. Okay. Oh, that that was. Other people. 
other people, people try to get you to do something, that's something else, you know? Well, but, you know, really, if somebody wants to get rid of Grandma, they, they'll, they'll find a way. They don't need this, this bill. Is just, um, it is <laughs> it's remarkable about, about this sort of stuff uh, to me. I've never been a victim of any, you know, I never thought of myself as a victim of any kind or somehow not able to compete with anybody. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, this, this, this attitude that people have that old people are somehow uh, like babies, that they're like, they've become children, that's just not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going down that road of being a victim, no. <laughs> Just because you know, I'm old doesn't mean I'm going to be. I hate that yeah. stuff when people start giving me, oh, we have to take care of our kapuna. Are you talking about me here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm kapuna, but I'm not going down that victim road. No, nah, can't, can't, can't play that game. No, I'm, uh, yeah. yes. So Friday, the bill will be heard again. And we think right. this is the final time before it goes to the full Senate? Is that what's going to happen? Yes, ma'am. That's what's going to happen. And no amendments at this point? No amendments. Any amendments would, any amendments at this point would throw it into a conference committee. And we might lose. And be, uh, and be, uh, probably cause more, a lot more trouble then we need to have cost. This is the best way to go. I've uh, instructed uh, uh, by email all of our supporters uh, to, to uh, simply say uh, support uh, uh, the bill unamended and uh, not, get right. in, not get into the weeds on it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, that was... That... Well, John, darling, I love you. Yep. And thank you, dear. <laughs> thank you for putting yourself out there to just stand up and let people see that there is someone, a real face, and this is not yeah. a theoretical case. Well, you both, you you both have done that before. You know, you have to put your somebody's got to be the object. <laughs> you know, whatever the object is, somebody's got to do that so that. You know, if people want to throw some rocks at it, then they can they and they do. something to throw rocks at. And then if people want to say nice things, they got people that, you know, it's, it just all works out for people. You just have a nice object. Somebody's got to play the role. Uh, Scott, I know you've played it, you know, very well for a long time. And Marsha, you have too. And this is, as they say, you know, they gave me an opportunity to do something. And I and I, I I hope it's going to work. <laughs> it will. And thank you so much for being that object, for taking a stand, right. and allowing people to throw darts. So thank you, aloha. I'm and grateful we'll see, to you, uh, aloha. We'll aloha, see you Friday.